In this tutorial, I'd like to take some time to introduce you to the different templates you have available inside of Microsoft PowerPoint. So whenever you start a new presentation, you have the option of creating a blank presentation, which actually is usually not recommended, or you can start off with the template. Now these different templates provide certain things for you right off the bat, including uh, background colors or possibly even a background image, like in the case of Celestial a font choice for your title, different font choices for your subtitles, and all the text that follows on future slides past the first one. And the people who created the templates have already gone ahead and chosen the text colors for you to mesh with the background and all the other elements going on with the template. So what using a template allows you to do is save a lot of time and effort getting a head start on your project. So normally, if you're going to create a new presentation, it's a good idea to just go ahead and select one of these templates here. Of course, if you don't like the templates available here, you can always search for more online using the search bar at the top. So if we wanted to go up here, we could search by maybe putting in a color like orange and it would return templates that are similar to the information we put in there. And in this case, it did in fact return a lot of templates which may have been tagged with the word orange for obvious reasons because you can see these templates for the most part have an orange theme about them. Now let's go ahead and try using a template. When you click on a template certain ones actually have multiple color schemes. So for instance with this Berlin template if you don't like the orange based color scheme you can try a blue one or a green one. And although the layout is still the same, it does change the colors so it can suit your purposes better. When you've selected the one you want, just go ahead and hit create and it'll basically set you up with a good default slide. Now whenever you create a PowerPoint presentation, the first slide is almost always going to be a title slide. So the template has already gone ahead and added in text boxes for us to type in a title and a subtitle. So we can go ahead and do that right now, just something very simple and a subtitle. I'll just put my name there and that, that's, that's fine right there. That would be a absolutely reasonable title slide to have. And it took us very little effort to actually get this set up. That's what templates do for you. Now, you'll notice if we go ahead and create a new slide that actually the layout becomes a little bit different. You can see it's still got that theme going on. Uh, with the Berlin style where you have the black box for the title of the slide and then uh, a little bit of green light green filler over to the right and then we have the main body text in the lower portion and that's the section that's really different from the first slide because in the first slide it was just the title taking up everything so here you could for instance start putting in your bulleted points like uh, one two three and then you just need a title for the slide and you'd be pretty much good to go and in general, just go ahead and fill out your presentation just as normal. Now let's say that after choosing a theme and starting to write your PowerPoint presentation that you actually don't like the theme you chose. What you can do is go over to the design tab where you'll be presented with all the other themes you have installed and you can quickly swap between them simply by clicking on them on the list. And if you want to see more, just click on the down arrow towards the end. And to the right of that, you may see different color schemes for the theme you currently have selected. So we could easily just change it over to the blue theme by clicking here. Now let's go ahead and say that you're not fully satisfied with how the background actually looks in this theme. For instance, you don't want this exact gradient, or maybe you don't want a gradient at all and you'd rather have a solid color. What you can do is hit Format Background over here in the Customize area. And you can choose between solid fill, gradient fill, picture or texture fill, which would be where you use an outside image, or a pattern fill. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate those different fills. Solid is going to be one single color all the way across the background. You can see it doesn't actually look that bad using that color. Uh, but in general, the gradient makes it a little bit more detailed. Now, if you want to actually change the gradient, you can click on each of these different colors. You can also drag them around to determine at which area the gradient is going to be what color exactly. Um, you can, of course, change them by clicking on color and selecting from the drop down, or you can hit more colors and just choose your own any of the colors in the RGB color model. You can also change the direction of the gradient to tell it which side or which corner of your PowerPoint presentation do you actually want the gradient to be starting and ending. 
For instance, linear right means that the gradient is going to end at the far right and it's going to take one single path to get there. That's from the left to the right and it's going to go straight there in one direction. And all of these uh, different gradient patterns you see here are linear. However, you do have different kinds of gradients available to you if you click down on the type menu. A radial gradient is very much like a sun effect. Imagine you're staring at the sun and the light is focused towards the center of the circle. That's going to be a radial gradient. So in this case, the initial radial gradient, the sun is somewhere over here to the bottom right hand corner. And of course, it's not a real sun. It just looks brighter and then it dims as it goes further away from that center point. However, we could easily change where the center point is by clicking on direction. And for instance, we could put it in the center by hitting the from center direction. And now the light is concentrated in the center of our slide. Now for each of these different gradient stops, which we have set within the gradient, of course, we can add more by hitting add or remove gradients um, to basically make the gradient more complicated. But for each of these points, we can change the position, the transparency, and the brightness. Now the position means how far from the starting point are we going to be percentage-wise when it actually turns this color. So you see, if we increase this, the point where it turns into this light blue specifically is going to be further away from the center point because we have the center uh, from gradient selected here. Now in this specific case, what actually happens is that everything before this point just assumes the same color as this point because there's no other gradient stop to give it any more directional information. So everything before 24% now in the position has the same color as the 24%. Uh, but if we, for instance, moved this on the other side of uh, the first gradient stop, then you'd notice that the color that starts off this whole thing was actually what was originally in the middle. So you can really play around with this and uh, there's actually quite a bit you can do with gradients. Now transparency is talking about how visible the colors of this gradient are. In the background behind this whole slide, what is actually there is just a simple white background. So if I take any of these points and set it to 100%, uh, you'll notice that a portion of this gradient just churns into uh, being completely transparent. You can actually see the white background behind it. Now, you can't see it perfectly because uh, when you have gradients, you have two different points of the gradient, it's actually merging those two sets of settings, the two colors, the two transparency levels at every step in between. So halfway between the start and the uh, second point, it's going to be roughly 50% transparent and it gets more and more transparent as it reaches that center point. Now, when you set the brightness of a gradient stop, what you're basically telling those different stops is at that specific point, how far towards the light color or white do you want this gradient color to be or how far towards darkness or complete black do you want it to be? So if we set it to negative 100, it's actually going to turn completely black, even though the color was set to some kind of blue. And if we turn this to 100, uh, plus 100% brightness, it's going to become completely white. So everything between plus and negative 100 is going to be some shade of whichever color we actually selected. So I'll set that back to 30 for now. Now with picture or texture fill, I did mention that you can use your own images, either from online or your own local computer. However, you don't necessarily have to do that. They do have built-in textures to PowerPoint 2016, which is quite nice. Because if you want a textured background instead of a gradient, you could just select from one of these. And uh, they all work fairly nicely, though not every single texture will fit with every base slide design. Now, if you click on online right here, what it's going to do is bring up the Bing image search. Now, you got to keep in mind when you're searching online that certain images may not just allow anybody to use them. They may be copyrighted. But one thing they did really nice here is that when you search for an image, by default, it's automatically going to be churning up Creative Commons images. And Creative Commons images, uh, you do generally have permission to use freely as you wish with different kinds of materials. For instance, a PowerPoint presentation, a Word document, or a blog post. That said, you can hit Show All Web Results to actually show non-Creative Commons images. But if you're going to do that, once again, you may be running into some copyright issues, so do be careful with that.
Now, one of the more important options you have available here is to tile a picture as texture. Now, with any texture, that's pretty much going to be a default because a texture is a image file that you actually want to keep repeating until it goes all the way across your entire slide. For instance, if we uncheck this, you'll see that instead of being tiled and repeating itself, it just stretches itself all the way across, and that looks terrible. Um, but you may or may not want to actually tile it if you're using a regular image. For instance, if you're just putting in something that already has like a 2000 by 2000 resolution, you may not want or need to tile it at all. If you want to shrink your image down, you can do that with scale X and scale Y, but you will note that you can only actually go to 100% with this, so you can't make it even more expanded. It can only be scaled down, so we could make this... 50% uh, and 50% and then you'll notice that it tiles a lot more and that's because we've basically taken our texture and made it an even smaller tile. Now in that case it doesn't actually look good so we're going to back off on that. With alignment you can control the starting place you want this image to be at. So by default it's going to be at the top left up here of course but we can make that top right and you'll notice that the image shifts around as the tile aligns itself to the top right corner instead of the top left. This would be a lot more noticeable if we were actually using just a standard image instead of a tile, uh, but you should get the idea there. Specifically with textures, you can get some interesting effects, and yes, I did change the uh, texture to this fish one so you could see this better, but instead of just having this tile where it goes the same tile over and over and over again all the way across, what you can actually do is use this mirror type to basically reflect certain portions of the tiles uh, over across the horizontal axis or the vertical one. So I'll go ahead and show that now. And you can see that when I reflect it, it actually changes how the pattern appears on our slide. And you can do vertical as well, or you could do both simultaneously. Now patterns are even simpler than a texture. In fact, here we're basically just looking at different dots or lines that the computer's drawing instead of an actual image. So in this first one, we just have a bunch of dots using the same color as before. Uh, we could, of course, change that foreground color to red, which will change this all to red dots. Very, very different than the blue dots. And we can change the background color to something else, though black would be pretty standard. So if we made it something like green, it's pretty bad. Uh, that's one reason why you normally use black or white as a background color. Um, and we can also change the pattern. Now, this is all being generated by the computer on the fly. The patterns are simpler, but that doesn't mean they're not worth considering. Uh, sometimes you want something that's not going to stand out too much in the background so that people can actually just focus on your text. Now, if you do decide that you're satisfied with the new background, you can go ahead and hit apply to all, which will change the background of all your slides. But if you ever want to go back to the default, just go ahead and click back up on the variance and then hit apply to all again. Now one option I haven't been talking about is the ability to hide the background graphics. Now you do have this background, but you see in the foreground we have this black box and this smaller light blue box. We can actually hide those completely just by hitting this option. Back on picture or texture fill, I'd like to show you a couple more tabs over here that you actually have in Microsoft PowerPoint 2016. The effects tab allows you to take your texture and actually change it up a bit with some different artistic effects. For instance, we can kind of apply this plastic warp and it's going to change it dramatically. Now, that doesn't look so great. Uh, we can, of course, play around with the smoothness, which will make it kind of blurred out or a lot sharper if we decrease it back to a zero and make that effect specifically transparent. Now, the effect transparency is not going to have a direct effect on the pattern itself, only the transparency of the effect. Now let's go ahead and try a couple more of these out here just to kind of demonstrate. These may not work with every texture so greatly, um, and it may be too distracting from the PowerPoint itself, so you can use these, but be careful with them. On the picture tab, you have some of the same controls that you would have seen on gradients, um, including brightness. Now, contrast is a little bit different. Contrast will actually just make the colors stand out dramatically different from each other. So if we bump contrast up to 50%, you see that it becomes a little bit hard to look at because these different colors are just so harshly pitted against each other. But if we put a negative contrast, 
then it dulls the colors out and it becomes easier, softer to look at and harder to actually differentiate between any of the different colors on screen. Brightness, of course, if you increase brightness, it's going to look a lot lighter. And if you decrease the brightness, it's going to look a lot darker, getting closer to that black color. Increasing the sharpness level will put harsher edges on our texture here or our background image, whichever we have to work with. The presets are just putting it at 0%, 25%, or 50% sharpness, or 25% or 50% soften. To better demonstrate sharpness and soften, I went ahead and changed the background image so we can get a better look at this. Now we're going to change it to 50% sharpness, and what this will make this image is a lot more edgy. The lines will be much harsher. Now you can see we sharpened it and it looks harsh, but if we do the opposite, we change this to a negative 50, it's actually going to soften it and make it very blurry. It's hard to actually even see exactly what the original image was. And of course, as the last options you have available to textures and pictures on your background image, um, you can play around with the picture color. And this has some nice options, basically allowing you to set the color tone. You can have set, of course, use presets. If you want a very light and yellowy color, you can change the temperature of the color to, say, 11200. Okay. And now it basically completely changed the look of this image. We can, of course, reduce it change it to a cooler look by dropping it to 4700K color temperature. Now it's got a soft blue look to it. Other options you have available to you is to completely recolor the image. For instance, if we want to make this portion pretty much black and the background itself to a red, we can go ahead and do that. So now it's basically stripped all the color out here and anywhere there was white before is now going to be a red color. It looks completely different. And then of course, depending, break, and then of course we can decide how much color we want. The color saturation, if you set that to 0%, it's going to have no color at all. If we set this to a higher level, it's going to have incredibly vivid colors. So we could change this to 250% uh, color saturation. Let's actually go ahead and remove the recolor though and remove the color temperature so we can go ahead and see that better. So this is with 250% color saturation. You can tell very, very vivid colors. If we change that back to 100%, it's the original, still kind of vibrant, kind of vivid colors, but more manageable. If we set this to 10%, it's almost completely grayscale. And if we do set that to 0% exactly, it does in fact become grayscale, black and white. So that's all about choosing your template and controlling how it looks for now. I'll see you in the next video.